How many years have you been a police officer? Well, I spent 21 years in the New York City Police Department. Mm -hmm. And I retired in 1985, and I was uh, recruited by the Organized Crime Task Force in New York State. Well, I've been since 85 when I retired, in 1973. I got promoted to sergeant, I got transferred back to Harlem again. Mm -hmm. And I worked in East Harlem for two years, and there I was uh, in charge of a neighborhood police team, and also I was the intelligence officer for organized crime matters mm -hmm. within that precinct, because that precinct was one of the headquarters of the mafia. They had their social clubs there, they still do. In fact, the commission case that we made at the end of my career, right. one of the major locations where we had a bug was on 115th Street, just off First Avenue in East Harlem. Mm -hmm. It's Little Italy, it's East Harlem, mm -hmm. it's in Brooklyn, it's in Queens, but the main ones were East Harlem and Little Italy. Now, in April of 78, I went to uh, the chief of detectives, the chief of detectives office in police headquarters where I was made the commanding officer of the organized crime homicide task force. Okay. Now, my job there was to investigate gangland slayings. Mm -hmm. For the most part, the Italian mafia, but it developed into the West Side Irish. And uh, while I was there, we solved 82 homicides. In 1985, and I, re I decided to retire after we made the commission case, and that's the yeah. case where we took nine heads of the five families. They're all yeah. convicted. They're all doing 100 years. Yeah, yeah. By Tony Solano. They're all in jail or dead. Mm -hmm. uh, Castellano, of course, was killed before he was convicted. Right. Yeah. He got the ultimate conviction. Uh, <coughs> with the mob, I had very, very few apprehensions about the mob. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. The, the, the mafia, historically shy away from killing law enforcement people. Mm -hmm. And most of the time when they do it, it's an accident. Mm -hmm. For example, there was a top killed in, uh, in Queens a couple of years ago named Anthony Vendetti. Right. He was killed I by a guy named Fritzi Giovanelli. Yeah. That was a total uh, miss, uh, it was a mistake. He thought he was a hit man. And they thought the he was, was a hit man? Right, mm -hmm. and, they, and they killed him because of that. Mm -hmm. And it was right after Castellano got killed, so they were mm -hmm. all carrying heat. Right. And they're figuring, here comes a guy who looks like a mobster, but he was a, he was a top tail in them. Yeah. And he had a gun, and they had a gun, and they panicked. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they killed him. Well, so when I was doing mob cases, it was very rare that we were concerned about getting killed mm -hmm. or hurt. Although you can always get hurt. Yeah. But uh, wise guys is a game. Mm -hmm. Okay? Catch me, fuck me. Okay? Yeah. If you got me good, I'll play the game. I respect you, you respect me. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, the good ones. The second reason they don't like to kill cops is that it brings too much heat on them sure. and screws their business up and their whole being is controlled by the dollar sign. And if you kill a cop, you know you got problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to cut back, going to cut it drastically into your profits. The other crime bosses want to get rid of you because of what you did. So they don't need that kind of stuff. So they shy away from killing police officers, judges, prosecutors. Once in a while you get one, but it's normally an accident. Well, John Gotti is a creation of the media. Now, during the Gotti trial, I was down there from the Gotti trial, and I'm sitting in a cocktail uh, in, in a Italian restaurant on Mulberry Street. In fact, it was GM Bonds where Gotti would go every day. Right. We know the owners very well because they try to close from the DA's office mm -hmm. where I work. And I would see Gotti's lawyers coming out while the jury was still out, arm in arm with reporters, female reporters. And then they would get on television and glorify John Gotti, who's mm -hmm. nothing but a thug. I mean, it's just outrageous. I know him a long time. Mm -hmm. He's always been nothing but a stick-up man and a thug, an evil, evil person. He hasn't got the IQ of a marble. But he took over that family by coup d'etat, by killing Castellano. Mm -hmm. I mean, he arranged that hit so he could yeah. take the family over. And uh, for years they wanted to kill Castellano, but they weren't allowed to because Emilio Delacroce, who was the underboss in the Gambino family, wouldn't let them because he was from the old school. Right. He was the respect routine. Mm -hmm. He dies. Ten days later, they killed Castellano. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then Gotti became the boss. Gotti wears $2,000 suits, he gets his hair cut every day, he gets, man, this is no bullshit. When we had the bug in this place, we get his hair cut every day. So the media shines to a guy like that because he wears expensive clothes, he's flamboyant. On the other hand, that type of behavior pisses the other mob bosses off yeah. to the yeah, degree where they already that. put one hit out on him and it was yeah. stopped by the yeah. FBI in, in, in Newark. And he'd be dead today if it wasn't for the fact that he's got built-in bodyguards. Built in bodyguards, meaning the FBI, the New York City Police Department, my office, because we tail them all the time. Yeah. If we left them alone, they'd kill them. 
but the media has made a mistake. You know, you, you know the case is there. You know he did what you're accusing him of. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. And the evidence is there. If you didn't have the evidence, you wouldn't be in the courtroom to begin with. Right. Yep, yep. But you couldn't get that far. You right. couldn't get past the grand jury without the evidence. And then you got to you got to get into a jury's head. Why does a jury acquit a guy like this? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons. The media hype, the Gotti myth. Mm -hmm. where they made him a hero. They make him a Robin Hood. But that's all pre-designed. He's not the only one that does that. They, they create a fortress in their own it. The Littleys are fortress. Yeah, yeah. Almost impossible to get into the foot bugs. Mm. No? I mean, we do it. Yeah. Sometimes we get lucky, but they control the people around them. The people mm -hmm. around them mm -hmm. think they're heroes. Even with <coughs> the Irish mobsters. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, there was a major, major Irish criminal for years that I, that I, that I had put away. He was finally murdered. His name was Mickey Splain. Mm -hmm. They loved him. To this day, people that I know since I'm a kid come to me and they're pissed off at me because I put Mickey Spain away. Mm -hmm. he, he, was a, he was a murderer. He was everything you would think that you wouldn't want your kid. And here they are, the hero oh, mm -hmm. Mike Spain was a terrific guy. He wasn't a terrific guy. What about the quote, uh, the famous, three to one, I beat this yeah, guy, he says? Yeah, he yeah. said that to me. I got in trouble over that. What happened was, the night we captured him, there was four of us there, with three New York City detectives and me. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of other people. We actually grabbed him. And he, uh, he had a big belt buckle on Okay? And when I was tossing him, I feel a belt book and I thought it was a gun. So I said, you, you got a fucking gun on you, right foot. So I got a full left hook at him, and there was a police sergeant there from the police department, which I'm no longer, but Joe, don't hit him. Don't hit him. <laughs> so I don't, but it was just a buckle. So we put him in a car, he says, what, what are you doing? He said, three to one, I beat this fucking case. You know, he was like arrogant. I said, save your money and stick your money up your ass. But anyway, he would have won. Uh, let me tell you why they respect yeah. me, the bad guys. Mm -hmm. You know about corruption in the police department. Yeah. I mean, you've heard it over and over, and, and it existed, still exists. Yeah. It's not as organized as it used to be. When I went into the job, my father was in the labor union business. He was an organizer, so he was like on that side. Yeah. He told me the day I became a cop, he said he didn't want me to become a cop, and I did. He says, look, if you ever take a nickel from these people, they own you. Mm -hmm. So I live by that. I never took their money. Yeah. That's one of the main reasons they respect me. They tried, yeah, but I never yeah. took their money, ever. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I live in Levittown. <laughs> 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 and I was Joe Frazier's bodyguard for both alley fights. Really?